I think he didn't perform with the first show. I'm not too sure. Yeah, he didn't perform with the first show. But he performed every single show. Very, very unique poet. And I'm going to call him to the stage. He goes by the name of Poet. Put your hands together for Poet. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Sadiq, a.k.a. Poet. Stands for putting out eternal thoughts. Um, I didn't think what I was going to do yet. Um, I'll do a new piece. I um I wrote this piece to kind of shed light on a situation that most times goes ignored. So maybe next time y'all come in contact with the situation, y'all look at it differently. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. Can I have your attention? I apologize for the interruption. I'm here speaking on behalf of myself, along with everyone else in our situation. I, I want to make this brief, so no need for introductions. No need for any names. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm homeless. But don't worry, I ain't here begging for any change. But if I was, you wouldn't have to worry about me spending it on drugs. Two reasons. One, because I'm hungry. And the other, because I'm high, so the money I have, shit, I already spent it on crap. No need to look at me surprised. Two things I don't have a lot of is money and time. So when I do, I don't like to spend it on lives. I'm a veteran, strung out on heroin. But it's hard to support my habit when I don't have the funds. It ain't fun going through withdrawal every couple of months. See, many people don't have any sympathy because they feel my habit set the tone for me not having a home, but I was on the streets first all alone. The habit came later. The pain was too much to bear. Then it became greater. I was at a point where I was worse than I ever been. All I needed was someone to save me, but there was no hero. So I turned to heroin. It's usually at this point where people start to turn away and ignore me, and I hate to bother you with my boring some story, and there's no need to reach for your pockets. I understand, I understand your expenses are through the ceiling, but you could spend that dollar when the jackpot was 200 million. I guess it's easier to fund your own greed, I mean, dreams, than to help someone in need, but then again, it's not your fault. No, it's your responsibility, see? The government has the ability, but they'd rather spend billions on a war and search some oil. The shit that bothers me. If you're gonna fund the war, then why not the one on poverty? You can easily stop it, but never will, because in helping the poor, there's no profit. Things will always be the same, so forget what I said before. Did you spare any change? That's it. <laughs> um, one more real quick. Um, this, this next piece, this is a brand new piece. I was trying to memorize it on the way here. I don't know if I did it, so if I didn't, you know, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just walk off if I mess it up. <laughs> but um, before I get into, it, um, let's say, um, I got a spoken word album coming out soon. Hopefully, be out before the end of December. You can check me out on MySpace, MySpace.com/slash/spoken-world. So check for updates and all that. Alright, this one's called Poetic Assault. Hello. I'm forever protected as long as words are my weapons. I'm effortless with my cleverness. I got an awesome if you ever disrespect us. I'm a wordsmith, connecting concepts like letters when they're cursive. My lines intertwined with rhymes so far ahead of your time that your soul has trouble keeping up with my mind. So you gotta be kidding me, trying to get rid of me with my metaphors and similes, confine your existence to an epitome. I take your pain that is permanently tattooed and molded to a poetic statue. I'm that true. Your, your stimulation has a poetic statue of limitation. Well, I'm too clever to not last forever. My words are addictive, more potent than dope. It lingers in the air, call it secondhand hope. My competition is missing, better yet non-existent. Listen, I'm the very definition of truth. The constant repetition of my vision is proof. Man, first I'm gonna call to the stage. Um, he's been wonderful. Yeah, two. I mean, if y'all if y'all wanna hear one, y'all keep it real. You know, y'all trying to get out of here, but I'll do one. I'll do one. I'll do one. Oh, you want to hit it? Yeah. All right. What the? F you see that girl at the corner? Or we'll make it true, it's life I can't tell. But you can bet she's getting that money for sex out. She's so pretty, she could have been an actress, a model, you know, someone famous. But instead, she's in the back of that car giving herself to a stranger. She walks around with a poker face. Inside, I can tell she's hurt. But over her feelings, she pulls down that curtain. She thought she pulled up that skirt, pulled off that shirt. It's fucked up, right? But remember, she chose this life. I mean, she must have chosen it, right? But then again, I can't exactly imagine the back in grade school, you know, when the teacher used to ask you, like, when you grow up, what you want to do? What do you want to be? And her raising her hand up saying me, I want to fuck. We're trying to get paid. But what she really saying is we're trying to get robbed, we're trying to get raped, we're trying to get AIDS. Or the little kids in the class raising their hands saying, trying to see early grade. Damn. What happened to all the doctors? 
or the lawyers and firefighters. You're doing 25 a life, man, your future could have been brighter. You was out there serving fiends. For that, you could have been a crooked politician, a liar. You could have been selling dreams. But now nah, you was out there serving rocks. You was killing your people. For that, you could have been a cop killing your people. See what I'm trying to say? Some of these so-called honest professions are just as bad as the drug dealers, killers, and child molesters. Many times they're one and the same. Only difference is who's playing in it. And they the ones running the game. Like these young kids out here killing each other. Or just like the cops said to arrest us. Not those legit, just those sending 50 shots trying to dead us. And you can tell by the tone of my voice that I'm fed up. Fed up with the shit I see from day to day. First off, let me say, I don't condone selling drugs in any way. This world's filled with some messed up shit. And a lot of us gotta get it how we live. Like my man, typical cliche, underprivileged minority. He sold drugs because he had to. But see, I know this rich white boy he sold drugs and he's glad to. So they both got arrested in the same situation. Same exact judge they was facing. Only difference is, my man got sent to state. The white boy, yeah, you guessed it. He got probation. Yes. And see, my man was the same kid in the class raising his hand saying, when he grows up, all he wants to do is be a better man, a better man than his father was. See, when we run away from our problems, they follow us. So you can't run away, you gotta turn around and face them. And no matter how hard it is, you can't give it to temptation. Because coming from where we are, it's easy to sell drugs. That's how society is set up. We're born ignorant and we're bred to fail. But knowing that nine times out of ten, we still walk blindly down that dead end trail. No one only leads to two places, either death or in jail. But hey, we might as well. Because regardless, we're still stuck in this house. Or at least that's what it feels like. But it's not our fault. It's just we've been doing wrong for so long. It starts to feel right. Thank you.